the hot special main character syndrome, not that that's not relatable at all. The being an idiot part, I just feel like I'm drawing from like my personal input. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. I'm Emily. Today is Monday, February 5th, and this is the start of a brand new writing vlog. I have a million things to do this month. A million and one. Some things have happened in the last week since the uh, end of the January vlog, so I'm gonna tell you my February goals real quick. I rambled on a lot last month, and it's a big pain to try to edit that video, so I'm just gonna quickly go through my writing stuff for this month and then we're gonna chat a little bit. I need to finish the fulfillment for the Kickstarter for the see at the end of everything this week. There's still, there's a few books on the way from Amazon that still haven't gotten here and I thought they would get here today but they still haven't. Tomorrow, February 6th, is publication day for that book. We gotta do that. We gotta set up the page for the comic Kickstarter, at least start on it. It, it started, but continue on it. I am putting the sea at the end of every- I can't speak. This is gonna be a great intro clip. I'm putting Under the Earth in Kindle Unlimited for a little bit of a run to test that out. So we're gonna do that this month. I'm gonna start setting up the new In Dying Starlight books on Ingram Spark. The new In Dying Starlight, the rebranded versions. So there's no new ones. We are gonna finish developmental edits on part two of the fantasy romance book and start drafting it again get into part three. At the end of this month is the end of the 100 days for the comic challenge. We're gonna try to get that comic done in this amount of time. We're cutting it pretty close now, but we're gonna try. Gotta finish rebranding the Undying Starlight covers. Got a couple more to do. Gotta keep up on YouTube and social media. That's what we're doing. Yesterday, I just finished re-editing the last uh, of the Undying Starlight novellas. You guys wanna see what all 12 look like printed out? First of all, for reference, it's not big print or anything. You know, it's a, these are full, a relatively normal size printing, S font size. <laughs> this, this thing. I was always planning on one big box set for the Kickstarter. It might have to be two. I don't know if I can reasonably get this many words into a book without like hurting the spine, you know? Because big books sometimes the, the spine just breaks the first time you open them. This hurts my wrist to hold and I realized formatting would be different, but like, so I finished with that. Gotta start reformatting those. The weird thing that's going on right now is TikTok is imploding. Um, if you're not on TikTok you, TikTok, you probably have no idea what I'm talking about. Universal Music Group, which owns the majority of the songs on planet Earth, uh, them and the, the, TikTok and them, they're having a disagreement. They couldn't renegotiate the licenses for all of their songs. There are no UMG songs on TikTok. So there are basically no songs on TikTok except like everybody, everybody's edits or like movie edits and stuff are being set to classical music or just like funny things. Like I, I saw a bunch of edits to like Home Depot music and Kahoot music and like Super Mario Brothers music. So right now it's a music app with basically no music. Don't know how this is gonna go. It's pretty funny right now, but also uh, yikes. I'm glad that Instagram works better for me than TikTok these days, but mm. so far right now, the music that we have is like edited songs. So copyrighted stuff from UNG, but if it's like sped up or slowed down or there's text um, narration from a movie over it or you know it's mixed some sort of edit those are still up but apparently they're supposed to crack down on those as well on one hand the clock half is stupid and I kind of hate it and it's funny when big corporations have a pissing match with each other but also this is kind of hurting my marketing or it's gonna start hurting my marketing once all the music is gone and it's hurting a lot of like small artists who can't even, like the UMG artists can't even promote their music on the biggest music promotion app out there. It's wild. It's weird. It, this is, this app has become a meme of itself overnight. It's 
it's funny, but it's also yikes. I made an offhanded comment to my mom a week ago or so. As far as the fantasy romance goes, I don't want to just like insert a bunch of what people what TikTok likes into the book just to do that. I want my book to outlive the era of TikTok, you know? <laughs> and like the next day I learned that like UMG was taking all this stuff down, which might bring TikTok down, we don't know. I want my books to outlive TikTok. I didn't mean right now though. So now it's a race between um, can I publish the fantasy romance first or is TikTok going to kick the bucket first? They might just renegotiate with UMG. I, I feel like they're probably going to renegotiate, but if they don't, this this will be interesting. So as far as the comic goes, pages 17 through 25 to do, and then like two pages from before that in the middle that I skipped over. Oh, there we go. I have six spreads left to do and then one single page left to do. And of course the cover. As far as the fantasy romance goes, I'm on chapter 17 out of 23. This is part of the way through part two. I'm getting there. It's not, it's not as bad as I thought it was. Like as I was editing at a line level and inserting world building stuff, I have some things to insert, but actually a couple paragraphs like here and there each chapter are doing the majority of the heavy lifting. It's not nearly as bad as I thought it was. I keep overreacting and thinking, oh my God, there's massive changes needed. And I really just need to like sprinkle some stuff in to round it out. Gonna be fine. Do I know where I'm going with part three? Not really. I do, but I don't know how I'm gonna organize it or how I'm gonna get it there, but we don't care. It's gonna be fine. I've given myself a deadline until the end of March to finish the draft of this. If I don't, at that point, I can panic about my timeline and my schedule. But until then, I wanna finish up the editing this week, then we get started and that's like six more weeks to do another 40,000 words or so. Not a problem, it's gonna be fine. I didn't do any sort of video for the See at the End of Everything uh, publication day thing, so it's just gonna be the January vlog as long as I can get it edited. You guys will know by now. I, I feel like I was not prepared for this launch very well, but it, it's it's fine. It, it is what it is, as they say, but we're gonna do the best we can, which means I'm gonna get off the camera and do social media. Fantastic. Hi, I totally forgot I was gonna do an update today because it's Tuesday, February 6th, so it's publication day for my book that's somewhere over there. It's publication day for the See at the End of Everything. I have got some stuff I'm doing today publication day wise. I finished editing the January vlog yesterday and I was uploading it and it's still uploading. It's been uploading for like six hours at this point, <laughs> but it's at 92%, so hopefully I can still get this up at a reasonable amount of time for you guys. So I would like to at least put up a video on publication day, my goodness. But I've got to do a Kickstarter update, email all my ARC readers and remind them that they can post their review on Amazon. I'm doing social media, wait, ah, the phone turned off. Did you post? Probably gotta do some other stuff. I don't even know, I didn't make a list. I was not prepared for this publication day and you know, I'm not terribly upset about it because it's a novella. The Kickstarter did so well. I'm just kind of, I'm just like mentally at this point, you know, I'm doing my best. We're going to do some publication day stuff, but mostly uh, I think today's going to be chill. I'm going to make some pizza. I'm getting there on my comic, man. I'm just, it's getting it. I need the thing as done as I can get it so that I can do the Kickstarter and I can put on finishing touches in like the whole month of the Kickstarter. You know, it's, this is the type of thing where once you're done with it, there's, there's really nothing else to do. You know, once you're done with the art and you put the text in, it's not like a huge process, you know, compared to writing a book and publishing a book and getting it edited and formatted and reformatted and there's typos and there's, a, it's just, there's so little, very little dialogue. And once the artwork's solid, it's solid. You can send it to the printer or get a proof and send it to the printer. But I'm quite proud of the way it's going. I think it's going to be really pretty. I think you guys are going to like it a lot. There's a tractor going outside and it's loud. So I will catch you guys tomorrow or in a couple days, whenever. Happy publication day. Okay, it's the next day. It's Wednesday, February 7th. Welcome back to part 82,000 of Emily edits her fantasy romance book before it's even finished. I got a new mug. Look at it. It's, it's, it's enormous. It's like half the size of my face. Today I am, what's on the to-do list for today? Today I've got to package some of the final books for the Kickstarter. Work on the fantasy romance a little bit. I want to edit one chapter today. 
And then I'm gonna spend the entire rest of the day on apparently not having a brain cell. The comic. Yeah, it's, it's, we're a week into February. There's only three weeks left, which it, obviously. Got three weeks to finish a lot of stuff. It's not the end of the world if I don't finish the comic at the end of February. I just want to try. Release day went fine yesterday. Uh, nothing really to report. I did like the basic types of things that I needed. I got my video uploaded finally. I did my social media, did a Kickstarter update, and I got all my ARC readers messaged, but really it wasn't anything spectacular. <laughs> I am just... I feel like when you do a Kickstarter first, by the time you actually get around to publication day, you're just so burnt out on marketing and the publishing aspect that you're just like, whatever. Happy publication day. I don't know, maybe with the fantasy romance I won't be like that because it'll be like another really big sale day because it's a fantasy romance. I don't know. But I did pretty decently. I did better than I ever expected for a novella on this book. And so now... It falls into the same category as Under the Earth, which is you just continue to market it and see how it goes. That's really all I have to say. It's Friday, February 9th. I did work on the comic on Wednesday. I did not yesterday because yesterday the final uh, copies of All the Woods came in that I needed to fulfill the Kickstarter. And so I spent the entirety of the afternoon packaging up some of the really, really big orders. I didn't do all that much yesterday. Although I did in the morning finish editing part two of the fantasy romance so I can start drafting it at some point now. Immediately, but now I'm just like, oh my gosh, I haven't drafted this in over two months. I have all the packages for the Kickstarter done. This, I'm gonna run errands later today and I will be dropping off the final mountain of packages. I have a splinter, I can't get it out. I'm dropping off the final mountain of packages today. Almost 500 people. We have fulfilled. Ah. Oh my gosh, I might use a fulfillment company if my Kickstarters get any bigger because oh my goodness. I am working on setting up the page for the comic Kickstarter so that I can just get it approved so I can have the pre-order page up. Hopefully by the time this vlog goes up, I will have the little pre-order page able to be saved and if I do, the link will be in the description. But I plopped some of the pictures in, it's just cute. And I got most of the body text in there, I just need some like little stuff at the top and an image for the main banner image. And I can get it approved and then I can actually continue making it look professional. <laughs> Gotta get back into the fantasy romance, I'm just, I haven't drafted it in a couple of months and I don't entirely know where I'm going with part three, I know what needs to happen but I don't know how to get there, but that's mostly what I do when I write anyway. So I'm sure it'll be perfectly fine. And man, do I need to do Undying Starlight stuff. Now that I don't have to spend a lot of time packaging books, maybe I can actually get back to being ahead on this comic. How many pages do I have left now? 12 pages left. Oh yeah, Under the Earth, Over the Sky, I just enrolled it in Kindle Unlimited. So we are going to see how that does. Gen generally, standalone books don't do terribly well in Kindle Unlimited. Sometimes they do. You know, my sales for this book at this point are just kind of like a couple dollars a day. You know, it's not, it's not getting where I would really like it to be. And I do know of books that, like they're the first book in a series, but it's one of those series where the first book comes out and the next one doesn't come out for years. And that first book just does really well for long, long periods of time in Kindle Unlimited. And then the fact that this is fairy, fairy genre, I don't know, fairy fiction, even though it's not romance, the fact that it is in the fairy genre might really help me. And the Kindle Unlimited thing, you can enroll for three months and then you can just ask to be taken out. So if it just completely flops, I will have not lost on a bunch of money and I'll see how this goes. I have a feeling I can totally get this to work, which means I should get off the computer and do some social media mentioning it's in Kindle Unlimited and maybe I might get some people coming over there who haven't read it before. So we're gonna try that. I feel like I haven't said anything um, unhinged in this vlog yet, uh, so that's what this clip is gonna be. <laughs> it's Monday, February 12th. I don't remember where I left you, so I'm just gonna quickly say it. I finished the developmental edits on part two of the fantasy romance. I need to get back into the drafting. I have it in the past couple days just because I'm uh, avoiding it because I haven't done it in a couple of months. So I'm just, I need to just 
do the thing. I'm still behind on the comic, but we're getting there. I would probably have to do about like one page a day to do the 100 uh, day comic challenge successfully. There's a possibility. We'll see. I don't know. I did get the Kickstarter page up. Um, not up. The like the pre-order page where you can click save. It'll be linked in the description. It approved instantly in like five seconds. Like I clicked submit for approval, the little ball spun twice and it said approved. And apparently that happens sometimes and also because I'm in good standing with Kickstarter because I run multiple campaigns completely fulfilled. I need to do an update today and say I'm completely fulfilled. But apparently I kind of maybe get an automated process now instead of somebody like reading through the whole thing. I don't know. Whatever it was, it was nice. It approved instantly, which is a great improvement over like the Under the Earth one that took like 10 days when it was supposed to take three or something. The unhinged thing I was going to say. Maybe it's not unhinged. I think it's funny. So we know about like self-insert characters. It's used as an insult because it kind of is. My camera's just wobbling because usually it's in reference to like, oh, I'm not like other girls. Like the character is just so ridiculously perfect that it seems like the author is just inserting themselves into the main characters. So we know what self-insert characters are. And generally because of that, they're considered bad because they're, con you're inserting yourself into the main character. You're not making them their own person. And usually they're really obnoxious. My friend and I had had a discussion about this because she's like alpha reading the rough draft of the fantasy romance. And I had said that Neve, the main character, she is an self-insert, but it's totally fine because she's just a dumbass. I got reminded of that the other day. Aaron has some self-insert properties as well, but he's just like pissed at the world. That's, that's the self-insert part. It's just like his inner monologue. I didn't have to dig very far to like get his inner monologue, you know? They just said I had to blow the dust off the surface and there is like the, the, the snarky, Oh my god, people. That's hilarious, because you kind of can tell when a character is self-insert when it's obnoxious, but then when it's just something random, it's harder to tell because you have no idea. And I would just like to know that about other authors. Lee Bardugo, when she was writing Six of Crows, which character is a self-insert, but in just like a totally off-the-wall sort of way? You know, Aaron's self-insert just because he's a, a pissy little grump, and Neve is a self-insert because I look at her sometimes and I look at her decisions and I'm like, I would be precisely that stupid in that situation. It's not exactly flattering. <laughs> yeah, there's gotta be like a little bit of special character main, special main character syndrome because she's the main character and you have to have that within a fantasy romance where some hot fairy wants to be romantically involved with a human. It's just like a bare minimum, you kind of have to have it. So like the hot special main character syndrome, not that that's not relatable at all. The being an idiot part, I just feel like I'm drawing from like my personal input. <laughs> and I just, I want to know that about other authors because it's hard to tell when it's random. I just want to know. I heard something, I don't know if this is true at all because I think I heard it on like a Tumblr screenshot on Pinterest, you know? I think in Lord of the Rings, Tolkien had said he like related the most to like Faramir and Faramir's just kind of like a doofus. That's great. I want to know more about that. I want like less princessy self-insert characters and I want to know the just off-the-wall ones. You know? If you have any of those, I want to know. I'm going to tell you what my weekly goals are and I'm figuring maybe this week will be like we'll finish. I don't know how long this vlog is so far and I don't know when I'm finishing it off. So I'm just going to tell you the goals I have for the week and we'll see if this vlog lasts through the week. We are going to reformat in Dying Starlight 1 and get that set up on Ingram Spark. So help me, I need to do that. We're going to work on four pages of the comic. We are going to work on the Kickstarter page. We're going to look into Backer Kit because Backer Kit has like a Kickstarter pre-launch thing. We are going to start drafting the fantasy romance again. I need to get back on social media. Um, I need to set up a Facebook ad for Under the Earth because I have an Amazon one going right now. We're going to see... It's in Kindle Unlimited now. We're going to see like which works better, the Amazon ads or the Facebook ads. So I got to do that. Got to script some YouTube videos because I don't have any ideas left because I was just in January as we know. Gotta film and edit a video, gotta do some more exercise. I've been exercising just at home with YouTube videos and so that's what we're doing this week. So next thing I need to do is social media right now. I say that a lot and then I just go, I don't want to do it. <laughs> so I swear, social media. It's Wednesday, February 14th. I think I'm going to wrap the vlog up here because we are nicely halfway into the month and also 
I don't know how long this is getting. <laughs> I don't think I told you, but I am finished with fulfillment for the tea at the end of everything. <sighs> I ran this Kickstarter in like August and September. Oh my goodness. It, it's so weird not doing all the packaging and trips to the post office anymore, you know? After all this, <laughs> we finally got all that fulfilled. And it's only like a couple days after publication date. I did finally, finally, finally start drafting the fantasy romance again. I did 600 words yesterday on a new chapter. Not editing, actual new words. I don't know if they're any good, but it's fine. We'll just pretend they're good. <laughs> Which means we are back slightly in the groove of getting this book finished within a timely fashion. Although I will say that for the rest of this month, I'm probably not going to be doing big word days or attempting any of that, mostly because I'm still uh, feeling like, how do I draft books again? But also, if I'm going to be spending hours a day on creative projects, it needs to be the comic right now. So I'm just going to try to chip away a little bit at the fantasy romance, but like mainly get the comic done. And so hopefully in March we can zoom back into actually writing. Other than that, the random thing I'm doing right now is trying to figure out if running a book bub ad for Under the Earth is a good idea. Let us wrap this up here. I still have a lot of my weekly goals to do, but we can get that in the next vlog. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, giving a thumbs up and a subscribe really helps out my channel. You can, of course, grab Under the Earth Over the Sky, now in Kindle Unlimited, as well as the Sea at the End of Everything. It just came out. I, just, I still love these shiny deluxe edition. I hope you all are having a lovely February, and I hope I get this vlog out within a couple of days so that saying you have a lovely February actually applies. I didn't tell you anything about the comic, did I? I have 10 pages left. We'll talk about it in the next vlog. 10 pages left. I'll see you guys in the next video. <laughs> Bye.